Okay, we're going to go ahead and start because I don't know what time we're stopping, but it don't matter. I'll stop, I'll stop wherever I am at five, when, it's, when they come knocking on the door. It's okay. It's, it's okay that... Um, this is one of my favorite talks I've been doing the last couple of years because it talks about the sovereignty of God. Well, I do Bible studies often, and uh, one of the things that I always thought about, what does sovereignty mean? It means uh, supreme dominion. He's all-powerful. And I'm going to tell you a story about uh, how he became real powerful in my life. Thank you, sir. These men are just so nice to us. They, they take good care of us. He should be said that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the sovereignty of God, uh, supreme ruler of the universe, superior to all others. And that we have a great God. And at the end of this, you're going to say, wow, what a great, that's what I, I just want to brag on God and tell you what a great God he is. So number one, the first thing I want you to know is God is great. God is great. 2 Samuel 7.22 says, Wherefore thou art God, O Lord God. 2 Samuel 7.22, I try to say the reference three times so you can get it down. 2 Samuel 7.22, that's three times. Wherefore thou art great God, O Lord God, for there is none likely, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. I love it when the Bible uses this with our ears. It's, it intimates intimacy. You know, like, Whenever it's in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 9, when Saul was going to go get uh, crowned king, the Bible says that God spoke to Samuel in his ear. I love that. You know, it just it makes God seem so real. And uh, somebody I can even touch. Now, I don't touch God. I've never seen a 900-foot Jesus. No, don't worry. Uh, but... It's so fun to think that I have a God that that's, that is that touchable. You know, and so... He's that, he is great. Now then, look at Psalm 104 verse 1, or just write it down if you want to. Psalm 104 verse 1. Psalm 104 verse 1. This is the kind of a study that you could go home and look over it again and see if God speaks to your heart about something different. But this verse says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Thou art very great. So not only do we have a great God, but we have a very great God. He is all powerful. The Bible says in Matthew 28, 18, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Jesus was his son, but he's part of the Godhead and he has all power. It showed that in Matthew. Then Jeremiah 10, 12 through 13. Jeremiah 10, 12 through 13. Jeremiah 10, 12 through 13. He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. He made everything. It's remarkable to me that I have a knee that works like it does. Now, Jojo doesn't have a knee that works well, uh, but I have a knee that works like it does. I'm amazed that my eyes can focus and do what they can do. When you look at your at your hands and how they can grasp things and and what we can do. It, that God made us that way. It's remarkable to me. Well, then it says, When he uttered his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. God is in, he's supreme. He's all-powerful. And he's in charge of the weather. Now, it, it's, just, it's just something to me. We put up carnivals for a living. You know, every weekend we do put up these carnivals. Last year, when my son K.W. came off the road and, and his wife in March, and then my son Joe came off the road in August and his wife Katie, we had to put up carnivals all by ourselves. Now, that doesn't mean all by ourselves because churches usually give us help. But Kevin and I quickly realized we weren't strong enough to do it alone. You know, at first I said, it would be really nice just me and you have to, you know, travel, Kevin. You know, it would be great. And we enjoyed it because I drove one rig and he drove one rig. And when if we wanted to stop in a rest area for 30 minutes and take a nap, we could do it. You know, nobody would have to tell anybody. We, we just could decide whatever we wanted to do when we wanted to do it. It was wonderful. But it didn't work. Uh, so we had uh, we had to work it, work it out. So we put carnivals up for uh, a living. And sometimes we've seen where it rained on our carnivals. Because God let it rain. 
I didn't get mad at God and say, well, we can't have the carnival this weekend because you did this. You know, I just, that's just something that happened, you know. God is always, and this point number two is God is always in control. And we must relinquish control to him. A couple of year, two years ago, in August, my uh, insurance man, now because those of you that know me, we, we have big motor homes and trailers that we travel around with. And uh, one of the essential things you have to go have when you travel all the time is what? Insurance, right? So my insurance man called me and he said, and I'm the one that takes care of this area of our ministry. My husband has areas he's in control of, but I'm in charge of the insurance. So he calls me and he said, Loretta, your insurance doesn't like you anymore and they want to drop you. I said, drop me? Now, in 32 years, we've had two insurance companies drop us. State Farm, I, and if you work for State Farm, don't, you know, don't get mad at me. But it's true. Uh, one, we got, we, and it was, this was way before we even got stuff on the internet and it was all paper copies. I, we arrived in, uh, Hammond where our mail was going and I got the mail and it said your insurance canceled 30 days ago. We had been driving around for 30 days without insurance. You know, they didn't, they didn't call me and say, I'm going to drop you. And so the second time was after that big wreck we had in 2004. Progressive canceled as fast as they could. As soon as the, the, so we've been canceled before. Let me tell you. And I don't blame them. We're a big risk. We're not the normal. Uh, RVers, you know. So I said, "What do they got against us?" <laughs> you know, that's what I said. But he said, "I don't know." And it was, it, and so they were going to cancel us. But he said, "I'm going to hold them off till we find somebody." So he started looking for a company that would take us on. Well, it sounds easy, and there's lots of insurance companies, but it just kept on. September came, no insurance, you know, and I'm the one that worries. I don't know about you, but I'm the one that worries about things like that. You know, I remember one time we got to uh, California. We were sitting in uh, Bakersfield, California, and I opened up my mail. This is many years ago, and it said that you're ins- you had not paid your insurance, and your insurance had came. We'd been traveling for two weeks in California without insurance. Let <laughs> me uh, just tell you, it, it's it was awful. I I had a fit, and I called my insurance man because I thought I thought you liked me. Why did you Why did you let me not pay my bill? You know, now I got it on automatic. Whatever they take, they can take. I don't care. Uh, I used to want to know what they're going to take before they take it, but I just let them take it now. Uh, but uh, but. You know, so I'm, I'm the one that worries. My husband tells me, Loretta, you worry enough for both of us. You know, and it's probably true. You know, but my problem is I don't really understand how great God is. Do you know when I worry, that's yeah. my problem. Yeah. And my problem is that I don't understand how much God is fully in control of all this. Right. And God does not have my same time table. Yeah. <laughs> he don't take care of things when I think he should take care of them. You know, I, but does that mean he's a bad God? No. That means he's a good God. we got to just trust him. So God is in control all the time. So September comes and we still don't have it. But let me let me share these verses with you. Psalm 105 verse 16. Psalm 105 verse 16. Psalm 105 verse 16. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. God is so in control of life that he could cause a famine. He can cause people to not have food. I do not understand God being in charge right now and us having five dollars a gallon gas <laughs> in California. I don't understand that, but I do trust it. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's part of His plan somehow or another. It's going to be good for us and as long as He provides. You know, we get five miles per gallon oh. Oh. in these rigs. We just fueled up in uh, the two motorhomes fifteen hundred dollars oh. wow. to fill up the two motorhomes. Yeah. You think how? Well, I don't. I'm not going to worry about how because God's in control. Yeah. But I, do you know how much I tell myself that though? <laughs> yeah. Now, when the gas was only two something a gallon, it was wonderful. Yeah. You know, and I just oh, it's easy to <laughs> trust God. It's easy to think He's in control. You know, isn't it? Yeah. But boy, when times are hard, it's hard to believe He's in control and that this is part of His plan. Mm-hmm. But that's what God is. He wants us to realize, I can cause a famine or I can't. Look, Amos chapter 4, verse 7. Amos chapter 4, verse 7. 
Amos chapter 4 verse 7. And also I have withholden the rain from you when there was yet three months to the harvest. He stopped the rain right before the harvest. Now you know what that's going to do to the harvest, right? And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon and the piece thereupon it rained not withered. He said some of you all lost your harvest. And that was part of his plan in Amos chapter 4 verse 7. And we have got to learn how to trust God. I read a book many, many years ago about being a control freak. I think I am one. You know, I think growing up in a very troubled home made me want to be a control freak. Because life was so out of control there. And many, many times I'll say, Kevin, what about this? Kevin, what about that? And he'll say, Loretta, I'm in control. And I said, that's the problem. <laughs> I think that. I don't say it out loud to him, but I do think that sometimes. <laughs> you know what? Y'all like me because I'm so honest about what I'm You know, I, I, people say, oh, my husband's so wonderful. And he is wonderful, but he's human. You yes. know, his underwear gets dirty, you know. Uh, I have to wash him. You know, he's human, you know. But uh, but God, God is always... He is in control. And when I remind myself, I'm a, such a happier person. Yeah. I wish I could. You know how you have the radar on your phone that shows rain when rain's coming in? I don't even know how to find it on my phone. You know, I'm very challenged when it comes to all this. But my kids showed me on the phone once. I wish now I'd had them take a picture of it so I could show it to people. Because we were at a church in Florida. It was raining all around where the church was. Except there was a place right in the middle where the church was. And it was for a carnival. If that doesn't happen often. But for some reason, God that day said, I'm not going to let it rain. I'm going to let them have that big day in that carnival for that church. And it's not going to rain there. It was phenomenal to see that. But when Amos says, I, I rain here and I don't rain here and I do this and I don't do that. But it was part of God's plan. And it's part of our faith that we trust him with his plan. Yes. Now, I'm not. we're not talking a lot about COVID, but can I say this? It has to be part of God's plan. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We know it was caused by, we, we have suspicion that it's caused by a man. Mm-hmm. It was produced. But it's part of what God wanted us to go through. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to go through it with the right attitude and I'm trying to just accept it. Have I had COVID? Yes. Mm-hmm. I, I survived it. I'm here talking, you can tell. <laughs> uh, did I have other people that died from it? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. It doesn't even make sense how they died. One man I know ran five miles a day in his early 60s. And he got it and the Lord took him home. But it was part, it was his time. You know, we've got to have peace amidst all that's going on in this world right now. And amidst, and, and can I tell you, stay away from those conspiracy people. <laughs> You know, I got real into, I don't know, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, I got into something during the election time. You know, in January, before Biden was put in as the president, there was a conspiracy thing going where they said that the that the, all the troops were rallying and they were going to come in and keep Biden from get put into the print. I had a pastor's wife sent me the link that told me about it. I was really excited. <laughs> Inauguration day. I was watching expectantly. I thought all the troops would come in and it would stop it. and It didn't happen. Of course you know that. Right? But we try to find something that will give us hope. We don't need something. We got God. Yeah, that's, good. that's what I'm trying to say to us. Mm-hmm. We don't need, we don't need all these people telling us this is going to happen and this is what's, yeah. you know, we just need to read the Bible and say, God, I trust you. Mm-hmm. The Bible says in Mark 439, Mark 439, Mark 439, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. You know, God even has the power that he could stop us from sinning. Now, he doesn't do it. I still sin every single day of my life. You know, I say the wrong things. I think the wrong things. You know, uh, you know, I get mad at people. Every time I go to get in line somewhere, I choose the wrong aisle. <laughs> wrong checkout. It's just part of my life. It's just like, wow, God. You know, I don't know if you try to teach me patience or what, but I... 
I always, you know, and I look, I say, now which aisle, which lane should I get in? You know, which one will go the fastest? And I try to, I even watch the person that's checking them out to see how fast they're going. Because I want to get done fast. I don't want to stand here, you know. Uh, but it, it, inevitably, the tape will run out. You know, the, the person in front of you has problems. And I want to say, why didn't you take care of that before you got in line? You know, you know all that? That's, you know, that's just how I think. But is, am I saying that to brag on myself? No, I'm telling you how human I am. Amen. And that's, Mrs. Evans always said, when people, when ladies laugh, they're agreeing with you. That's like saying amen, Loretta. <laughs> but, but God can keep you from sinning. In Genesis chapter 20, verse 6. Genesis chapter 20, verse 6. Genesis chapter 20, verse 6. The Bible says, and God said unto him in a dream. Now this is the story of when Sarah and Abraham were going, were traveling. And uh, they stopped in a country, and Abimelech was the king. And God said to Abimelech in a dream, Yea, I know that thou did this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now, I think it's pretty neat. And as old as Sarah was, that Abraham said, You're such a hot babe. <laughs> you know, I, I've been thinking, I wish Kevin would say, Loretta, you're such a hot babe that I want to be. I want you to lie for me and say that I, you're my sister. I thought that would be such a compliment. You know, that he would think that way. He doesn't think that way. Don't worry. Uh, but God actually kept Abimelech from sinning. He says there. Now, God didn't, hasn't kept me from sinning. That's why I worried for months about this in church. You know, I'm going back to that story. And so October came, and I was in a ladies' meeting in North Carolina, and I was working the table, and I saw the phone call came from Joe, my insurance guy. So I said, I better take this. It was Friday, about 4 or 5 o'clock, whatever time it was. And so I went outside the church, and I took the call, because I thought maybe it was good news. I got the insurance, right? So I took the call, and he said, Loretta, I'm, I've worked all week trying to find I've been working for weeks, and I can't find anything. He said, you're going to have to reach out to people maybe that I don't know. So he said, why? I said, well, I'm at a ladies' meeting right now. He said, why don't you announce it to the ladies' meeting? So I thought, okay, I'll do it. So I announced it at the that ladies' meeting. I said, I'm out, I don't have insurance and I need somebody to help me find insurance. So if any of you all know of a different type of insurance program, you know, we tried all these companies, you that work in churches, they have, you have church mutual, you have all these other ones. They wouldn't touch me. You know, they, they'd send me, I was sending tons of paperwork out to all these people, answering all the ridiculous questions. I mean, they turned me down, uh, they turned me down because I didn't, I, I, we don't park at RV parks. You know, one one company turned me down because our our rig, which is 28 years old, it's an old rig. But when it was brand new, 28 years ago, it was worth five hundred thousand dollars. The company that makes our rigs that we live in right now, if you bought one, it'd be two million dollars to buy. Wow. It's that high of an end. But of course, you know, we didn't spend anything close to that to buy it. But that that's how they thought. You know, insurance companies they just think differently than we do. So we just kept getting turned down. So I asked the ladies to pray and ask them. So people came up and started giving me names. You know, and so for the next few weeks, I was just, I was reaching out to so many myself personally because I felt, felt like from that phone call from Joe, he had given up. And he said, I don't know how much longer I can hold him on to keep you. And I, I went to Kevin. I said, Kevin, do you, do you understand how serious this is? I mean, we're going to not be able to travel. You know, we even offered insurance companies to just give us liability against the other person. And God provided these. All our rigs are paid for. God miraculously gave us the money to buy them. So he could take care of, you know, we that's what Kevin and I figured out. But we still couldn't even get him to take us for liability. So this just kept going on and on and on. And I, But God didn't stop me from sinning. I was still worried the whole time. Right? Do we believe the Bible when it says in Proverbs 21.1? Proverbs 21.1. Proverbs 21.1. Do we believe the Bible when it says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it with us forever he will. Do we believe that? We, we have to. I feel... I. We're getting ready to come to the West Coast. First time since 2018, I think it is. Because we used to come every two years. In 20, we didn't get to come out here. 
When we come to California, I worry about all your old laws. You know, I got pulled over one time because my my GPS that holder was in the middle of the car instead of this side of it. You know what I mean? I, you all have all these secret rules. <laughs> you know, we've been in motorhomes and they policemen have motioned us and stopped us and told you're in the wrong lane. I'm thinking it doesn't say anywhere there's a lane for us big people. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? And so. I don't really like coming to California, but Kevin says it's the greatest harvest of souls yes. that we get because you all, your churches are so excited, you know, so we come. But, but can I, and, and I, I can see why you'd wonder about your leadership here. Mm-hmm. But if the Bible's true, yes. he's in God's hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the more you trust God with that leader, Amen. the better off you are. Instead of fighting and complaining and, you know, just don't even talk about him. You know, he's not worth your effort and your focus on him. The, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 32, 39. Deuteronomy 32, 39. Deuteronomy 32, 39. See, see now that I, even I am he and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. He is in control of every little thing in our lives. And we, when we trust Him and we realize that He's in control, we can be relieved of any responsibility. We can understand God really is in control. Can I say this to you? Whenever, going back to the insurance, you, this is the whole story, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, and you know we're still traveling, so I did get it. But... Uh, we were in Shelbyville, Tennessee at the end of October. This is three more weeks. Okay? And uh, Kevin and I had just done a split chapel for the school, and we got in the truck. Uh, it's an excursion. We got in the excursion, was going down Main Street in Shelbyville, and a car pulled out right in front of Kevin. And it turned us around, and we, we were going 180. It, we did 180 degrees and was going backwards down the... It was a light drizzle all rain. It was, you know, it was quite exciting. <laughs> I got to call 911. It was, it was so fun. I'd never done that before. Uh, so I called 911, and, the, and we're sitting backwards in the road in this car, this little car that pulled out in front of us. It was an excursion. It's a 2004. It's old. It's tough. It's metal. It's real metal. Yeah. It's not the plastic stuff, you know. So we... You know, we we just had a pushed in place in our passenger side. And uh the the uh when I called nine one one they said, Where are you? And I said, I'm on Main Street. She said, Main Street's a big street, ma'am. Where are you? And I said, I don't know and so I said, Well, I see this convenience store and I told her where it was. She said, I know where you're at So she sent the police there. And he came and it was a drizzle of rain and so uh I thought, Oh, you know, I, Maybe he's got insurance and it'll take care of it. Because did I want to turn this into our insurance? Right. You know, they already didn't want us. You know, and I thought, how could I turn this in? It'd be just awful. And then if we're getting a new insurance, then we got a wreck on it right away because they go back so many months to check your record. Oh, anyway, it was just awful. So, uh, the so so when the policeman showed up, you know, I was feeling pretty good because I thought maybe. Well, then the policeman came up and he said. He says to us, he said, I got bad news for you. I knew what the bad news was. He doesn't have any insurance. He doesn't even have a license. You know? And the man, my husband had to get out in the rain and help push the car out of the road because it had demolished it. It was just in pieces everywhere with that big, hitting that big excursion. So he had to go out and help that man that had done all this to us. It was, I resented it a little bit. You know what I mean? But anyway, so, uh, so then the policeman said, so are any of you hurt? And he started writing on his, Report. So are any of you hurt? And I said, well, I would have been if he had insurance. <laughs> and he did that. He laughed. I said, that's what I wanted. You, you did what I wanted you to do. And he laughed really big. Uh, but, I, you know, we, we didn't get to do our errand because that took all of our time. And Kevin had to go back to preach another chapel service that morning. So we go back. And at that point, all our kids were traveling with us. And my home was the hub and the office. And so people came and went as freely as they could. So I, every pretty much every day of my life, I go to the post office because I'm blessed and people buy my books. I'm just blessed that way. And they buy our CDs. I mean, we're, I'm just, it's, I don't mind complaining. I do have to go to the post office a lot. So I got in the excursion after when Kevin went to do his service and I went to the post office. But, 
And everywhere I go, because I always have a GPS, my phone going with a GPS, so it was sitting up in our GPS holder. And I got to the post office and I was overwhelmed with emotion. We just had that wreck, you know, and it hit me, you know, we can't even fix that bump and Kevin hates, you know, it, it, he hates that have anything having a mar. You know, he just doesn't like it. We wax our rigs twice a year. We wash them all the time. He just thinks we're supposed to take care of things. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, I just sat there and I just let myself cry. I just boohooed. You know, and I'm sitting there and people coming in and out of the post office saying, man, she must have got a bad letter. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But I, I couldn't do it at home because I didn't want my kids to see me and see my lack of faith. You know, I, I often think that when I'm crying, I'm feeling sorry for myself. I think that. I don't know if you think that, if that, and if it's true. I know God gave us tears, and I think it's okay to cry. I'm not criticizing anybody that does. I just think that's what happened to me. So I just sat there and cried. And as I was crying, all of a sudden, my phone dinged. You know, it lets you know when things come up. And one of the men, one of the agents that that church, when I was doing the ladies meeting, they gave me the name of one of the agents, Bill Owens in Hammond. He's in Hammond even, which I know Hammond very well. So, but uh, this this guy, the agent's name, the guy that he gave me was name was Rick Dawka. And it showed that there was an email from Rick Dawka. And I'm sitting there crying because we don't have insurance, you know. And so I did what you would do. Curiosity got me because I'm a nosy person. Remember that? <laughs> and so I opened up, even though I'm crying, I opened up the email and you guessed it. He had found insurance with Safeco for us, you know. And Safeco was a company that that original guy dealt with, but they didn't want us there. But evidently, Bill and Rick knew how to word it right, that they took us on. So we got insurance. But I, I just can't tell you. Those three months was miserable for me. But can I tell you the reason why it was miserable? Because I didn't believe what a sovereign God I had. I was looking at circumstances instead of believing God. And that's why I did this thing. Because I said, I, Loretta, you got to have more faith. And can I say this to some of you? I've, I've been talking to a girl that started having panic attacks because she, so many things came into her life. She'd had a pretty good even life. She didn't grow up troubled like me. She'd have a pretty good even life. And then all of a sudden things started coming in on her. And she started having panic attacks because of them. And I said, well, I think God's trying to, he's trying to grow you in new faith. You know, I think that's what God's doing with all of us in these troubled times. He wants us to gain a new faith. And new meaning better. Not, not worse. Better. He, it's good for us. This faith is going to be good for us on the other side. We're going to be stronger Christians than we've ever been. But part of that is believing that God is in control. Part of it is believing He knows everything. Now write these two verses down, and I'm, I don't think I'll get to them, but I want you to have them to study them later on. Romans 11, 33-36. Romans 11, 33-36. Romans 11, 33 through 36, and Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. I wish I could dissect them for you because they're really good verses. Study them out and really ask God to show you the truth in those two sets of verses. Let me just say what uh, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. If you if you feel like we're living in, in certain times, don't talk about it all the time. You know what happens when you the more you talk about it, the more you convince yourself it's true. Yes. Mm-hmm. Everything's so bad, and this is not good, and then you know, it, God can't do that. And you know, it's you convince yourself of it. Mm-hmm. So stop talking about it. Stop thinking about it, and just focus on the fact that we have a great God. Mm-hmm. Study these verses. Realize Proverbs twenty verse twenty four, the last verse I want to give you. You study out those two. Proverbs 20 verse 24 says, Man's goings are of the Lord. Every step. I'm here today because God wanted me here. I made the reservations for Jojo Moffat to come here. And there was another flight that was different. It might have been better for him, but for some reason I didn't choose that flight. And it's good because it got canceled. My goings were, they were chosen that day by God. He led me. And that's where we have to live our life. 
realizing that our goings are of the Lord. The last part, how can a man then understand his own way? I, I'm not walking like I know where I'm going. Now, I'm a very purposeful person, and I plan. I'm a planner. You know, I want to know, I already know what I'm going to be doing next week. When I get home, this is happening, this is happening. You know, and I plan. I'm a, but that's not how God works. Yeah. <laughs> He's a day by day, step by step kind of a God. And He wants us to let Him be our, the light of our path and trust Him to do everything for us. And trust Him to direct our steps. And if we'll live our life that way, we can be happy people. Yes. I'm trying to give you joy. You say, Loretta, how can you be so happy? You live in a little box, 8 by 40. You know, you, I, I'm happy. But I have to work at it. I have to, on purpose, have faith and realize he's in control, always. And and uh, Monday when we took, uh, Tuesday when we took off from this church, we every day, the last three weeks, the people that are traveling with us, their motorhome is broken down every time we've taken off somewhere. And I'm thinking, God, you're really trying to teach this girl how to be patient. You know how that lady that's... <laughs> you know. I said, God, I don't need any more patience. You know I mean? <laughs> A 45-minute trip turned into seven hours. Oh. You know what I did? I just walked around, had a good time. I went and got McDonald's, which I don't get very often. Because <laughs> Kevin doesn't like it. He thinks it's not real food. Uh, he's crazy. I love McDonald's. But anyway... Uh, but I just tried to find, and I, and you know what? That girl is doing really good. That's one of the hardest parts about evangelism is all the breakdowns, especially when you're living in 28 year old vehicles, you know. But they just had so many breakdowns that I just think it's part of God teaching her how to let Him be in control. And she's doing great with it. I'm not, she is really doing great with it. But can I tell you, it, it, it could be easy to get frustrated. But God doesn't want me that way. And He does not want you to live frustrated either. Mm-hmm. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for these ladies. Oh, how glad I am I got to brag on you this morning. How glad I am I got to show these ladies what a great God we have. And I pray that you'll bless their ears as they listen. I pray you'll uh, teach in them in them in their hearts how to live their life letting you be in control. Please, Lord, just show them. Show them every day how to just not get ruffled, to just have faith. Help us all to not worry like we want to. Help us to focus on the positives that's going on around us instead of looking at the negatives. Lord, we want to live our lives. Let's teach us this new faith that we need right now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You are dismissed.